Hey everybody, this is Michelle from Florida Keys Birding, Reptiles, and Wildlife, and today we're going to be talking about a frequently seen reptile throughout the Florida Keys and all over South Florida for that matter. You will find them from West Palm all the way down to Key West. You guessed it, it's the green iguana. The green iguana has been called an invasive species, but there is some argument about this between the locals, scientists, and the experts about how long green iguanas have actually been in the Florida Keys. An article written by Dr. Doug Mater, the reptile expert himself, states that they may not be all that invasive actually. He says that it is a common misconception that iguanas were introduced invasively like the Burmese python. He admits that some wild iguanas have come from irresponsible pet owners or people have let them go in the wild, but the fact is that the Florida Keys are the green iguana's northernmost territory. Dr. Doug states that these animals are considered naturally invasive to the Florida Keys. This was proven after Hurricane Wilma in 2005 that blew in wild iguanas from the Yucatan Peninsula over to the Dry Tortugas on national natural rafts, not national rafts. They could be, I guess, because they went from Mexico to <laughs> across. Okay, anyways, done with the joke. So prior to Wilma, iguanas had never been seen at Dry Tortugas. And clearly no one released them as pets on the Dry Tortugas since the island is not habitable and no one lives on Dry Tortugas. There is no source of fresh water there either. So after Wilma, iguanas were still there and still are. So come on, there is no other explanation. If you don't know where Dry Tor Tortugas is, I suggest you Google map it and you take a look. It's a little island out in the middle of the ocean. Um, it's quite a few miles off the coast of Key West. There is no way to get there but by like two and a half, three hour boat or seaplane. It's nowhere near mainland island and like I said no one lives there. It's Fort, the old Fort Jefferson. If you want to know more about dry tortugas you can take a look and look it up. That can maybe be another video if you'd like to know a little bit more about dry tortugas. Anyway but there are wild iguanas living on dry tortugas and there's no other way they could have gotten here. So, so that's that. The case is clear. Um, according to an article from Tom Hambright, a uh, Florida Keys historian, and Dr. Doug, who did some research on the origin of the green iguanas in the Keys, there was documentation found in the Key West Citizen of iguanas that were here since the 1950s, long before they were being sold into the pet trade. Some locals say they have been here since the 1930s or 40s but others will say they weren't here until the 1960s. They are native to the Caribbean, Mexico, and Central and South America. Iguanas are of course in the reptile family. They are cold-blooded, which means they cannot regulate their own body heat. You will often find them sunning on a tree branch or on sidewalk concrete to help warm up and absorb some energy from the sun. The sun gives them energy to be active and helps them digest their food. On a rare occasion, when we get a strong cold front in South Florida, people have seen them falling out of trees, cold and stiff. People think that they're dead, but they're really not. When they get warmer, they become active again. So the green iguana can grow from 12 to 17 inches in length, from snout to vent. Males weigh about 8.8 .8 pounds, and females weigh about 2.6 to 6.6 .6 pounds. They can live up to 10 years in the wild. Iguanas have great vision and do see colors as well as UV light. They also have a photosensory organ on top of their head uh, it's almost like a third eye. The structure has some anatomical features of the normal eye and is sensitive to light changes, as well as movement. The third eye cannot form images, but it can detect predators lurking above them. 
This extra eye is present in several other lizard species as well as in some fish. Well, if you think about it, you know, that would make sense because, you know, lizards are a prey animal, so, I mean, they can prey on other things, but, you know, especially to birds above and, you know, fish, I guess, with ospreys and, you know, other kinds of birds like egrets and herons and stuff like that, so, you know, that makes sense that they would have that. Iguanas communicate through head bobbing and through movement of that hangy flap of skin under their necks. It's called a dewlap. Iguanas will extend their dewlaps to say hello and greet one another when they are being territorial. Or male iguanas will extend their dewlaps when courting females. Iguanas bob their heads slowly up and down at each other to acknowledge each other's presence. Like saying, hey, hey guys, what's going on? Faster head bobbing, either up and down or side to side, is a sign that the iguana is upset or feeling aggressive. Rapid back and forth head bobbing is usually an indication that the iguana is extremely upset and should be left alone. The iguanas will whip their tails to protect themselves if they feel threatened. Now I've seen iguanas doing these types of behaviors. And, you know, I have them in my yard all the time, and they walk through and stuff, and I've never had one bother me or anything like that. But, you know, I always give them their space. You know, I wouldn't just go and corner one or anything like that, so just use your common sense. But they won't, you know, come and chase you or run after you or anything like that. So, green iguanas are generally herbivorous, which means they eat plants, weeds, flowers, fruits and vegetables. They love brightly colored flowers such as hibiscus and bougainvilleas. So to nest, green iguanas will dig a hole up and lay up to 70 eggs. Wow, that is a lot of eggs. Contrary to popular belief of many locals, iguanas do have predators. Crows, raccoons, possums, and snakes will eat their eggs. Babies and smaller iguanas can fall prey to cats, dogs, but full-grown iguanas are much harder to catch. Probably only a gator, saltwater croc, large dog, or bird of prey could kill a full-grown iguana. This will still be a difficult task though because they are so fast. If you've ever seen one run, you know what I mean. They will bolt right out of there. Males and females are very territorial. If you get close to their territory, they will do a head bob and let you know not to come any closer. If you continue to come closer anyways, they will generally run away quickly. These gentle giants are nothing to be afraid of in my opinion. Do not taunt them though, because they do have razor sharp claws, so if one did happen to latch on to you, they could really tear your flesh by doing an alligator roll. If you see an iguana in his orange breeding color, you would be smart to keep your distance. Let them be, and they will let you be as well. Like I said, I've never seen one attack anyone, and I've never had a bad encounter with an iguana. But as with any animal in the wild, if you make an animal feel threatened, it's going to protect itself. That's just like anything. A cat, a dog, anything at all. So don't hate on the iguanas. <laughs> Last but not least, yes, iguanas do carry salmonella, but it's highly unlikely you will contract it from them. They're not going to allow you to handle or touch them generally, and I don't think you're going to be playing in any iguana poop either, so no need to worry about that. I remember visiting the Keys before I lived here and always seeing these little guys. But it may surprise you to know that many locals really do hate our scaly friends. Green iguanas seem to be a big problem for residents down here in South Florida. They dig holes in seawalls, eat vegetation, and some people even claim that they eat our native wildlife. I beg to differ, but according to Dr. Doug Mater, they do not eat mammals or birds, they only eat leaves. I personally have never seen one eat or go after any wildlife, and I have lots of vegetation in my yard as well, which is obviously not being devoured clean either. Neither is the rest of the vegetation throughout the Florida Keys when you drive through here. 
They only eat my weeds in my yard. Sometimes they chomp a little hibiscus, <laughs> which is fine with me. They are like nature's landscapers. Green iguana numbers are increasing, and many people want to eradicate them from sunny South Florida, unfortunately. To me, they are a symbol of our subtropic climate that we live in, and they aren't bothering anybody. We need to just learn to live with them side by side because they aren't going anywhere. Thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the green iguana. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Um, comment below if you have questions or if you want to know a little bit more about the local versus iguana feud. <laughs> Um, you know, I know I think it's, you must probably think it sounds crazy that people hate them so much. You know, I kind of felt the same way when I first moved here. Um, I mean, I, I understand where people are coming from and why they don't like it, but you know what? Don't move to a nature area if you don't like nature. That's all I've got to say about that. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below if you have questions. If you love iguanas, give me a shout out. Thanks and have a great day.